Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we'll be answering viewers on Slammiversary's event from TNA, and uh, this is sort of a doozy here. Uh, Mr. Jones, he, he he got issue, and we're going to we have to settle something, because, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that in, in, enjoys truth and equality, you know, and then there's, there's one spot where I'm, I'm going to have to just, I'm going to have to give up the game on myself on something. I'm gonna have to give it up because I don't. I don't. Uh, sometimes I want things to be a running joke or something I'm like. Uh, I can't do that now. I can't. I can't do that because it's not gonna come out right. Uh, but he gave his thoughts on the pay per view that he mostly enjoyed it. Well, no, that he did enjoy it. Um, it wasn't the best one, but it's an improvement over. And I agree, it's an improvement over against all odds. Yeah, it was better than against all odds. He said Matt and Dango was okay. He said Matt gotten slower in the ring due to his injuries, but you can see that he's trying. Okay. So I've got uh, a cognitive dissonance on this, okay, when he says he's trying. So here's, here's my cognitive dissonance. He says he's trying, and my first thought was, trying what? <laughs> That's, that was my first one, Okay. Because and then I was like, you know, that's that's just that's just a bit ignorant right there, you know. He look, he's trying. He's wrestling. He's moving. He's trying to do what he can do. He's trying to put on the match that he can put on. Okay, in that regard, you know, you can't you can't argue about that. Yeah, that that you know, you can't argue with that. It's just, but what is he trying to do though? Because the match wasn't put together right. It was. It's supposed to be anger. It's supposed to be a fight. You know. Maybe just show enough anger for an opening match. It shouldn't. It's a paper. Okay, I'm gonna say it like this. Because a lot of this stuff, it don't fall on the wrestlers. It falls on management, the booker, and all this other stuff. Yeah. The higher ups. And if you gotta, if you are publicly traded, then you gotta please them because they want their money. Well, we know TNA is not publicly traded. They don't have that problem. I don't. I don't know. See, I don't know. I can't who's say gonna, it. Who's going to? Who's going to? I don't know the him? person. I don't know the person that would do it. That's why I'm saying that they are a stone's throw from being NWA. They are small. Yeah, he touched on that. Matter of fact, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna scroll all the way down. No, no, they are not publicly traded. If you mean like we have a TNA and we're going to give it to this company next year, okay, they're traded like that. But other than that, no, you don't have to worry about it. They are not publicly traded. I, we have to, we'd have to look it up, and they probably, and it don't matter if they are or not. I'm not, my, my eggs will taste the same tomorrow. It don't. I'm telling you, Cedric, we do not have to look it up. Companies like WWE are publicly traded companies they'd have their first sold out crowd in a long time you don't put stuff like that on the stock market i agree i do i just don't know what has happened in the past when they were good and if that's held over or not i don't know i have not looked them up like that i appreciate your optimism it's not optimism. I don't know. I know you don't I know. I haven't looked it up. And that falls on the side of optimism in this case. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So y'all think I'm mean and stuff. Just, I guess because my voice is booming and I, and I talk more assertively. No, but this is realistic. This isn't mean. Damn. That'd be like saying, I'm publicly traded. Me, Cedra. Somebody going to go bullshit and be like, you're right. I ain't publicly traded. I'm like, well, that's, that's community <laughs> crotch right there. I don't need that. Now, we're that, not talking about crotches because I wouldn't trade that. You, you said community traded. I don't know. I didn't say community. I said publicly Pub- traded. Publicly. Yeah, public. Yeah. What's the difference between public and com- You know what? I'm not doing this with you. Yeah, you went there. No, I didn't. You started it. No, you went there. You started it. Publicly traded. Psh. Mm. They ain't got trading cards. And if they do, who's going to want them? I wouldn't. I want trading cards from any wrestling company because once you get everybody, what are you trading? Mm. Trading what? So somebody have to fill me in on that then. Unless they usually use them like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You know, you got the different moves on them. But then everybody would have the same stuff and then it won't mean anything anymore. So I'm just saying. So look. <laughs> Matt got, yeah, okay, Matt, Matt Hardy, he's gotten slower. Yeah. But that don't mean too much. 
You know, do what you can do. It don't take much to put on an actual professional wrestling match. But when you're trying to do more than you can or trying to pop the crowd with stuff, that's that's not wrestling. Wrestling is emotional. When the, the fans should be emotionally invested in you. It ain't about the moves you can do. I've I've watched some really good wrestling matches where the, the heel barely did anything. Never took a bump, never fell down, none of that. Punches, forearms, you know, kicks, knock them to the corner, getting heat on, on the baby face. Never took a bump until the very end. That was the finisher. I've seen that. And they were good matches. I'm going to be honest. This is one of the best matches I've seen out of Matt in a while. And I'll tell you why. So, being on AEW completely trashed him. Yes. Uh, character, nine character, all of it. And then being tired of him there, and then we start watching TNA, and he shows up here with this broken Matt yeah, Hardy I was, thing. I was already sour when I saw him. I was I'm like, like Crap. dude. And then he talks, and I'm like, dude. Um, you know, I don't want to tune into TNA and hear you know shades of an incoherent Trump rally. And in this. Uh, pay-per-view there was no talking there he wasn't back in in the back with a, a team talking tell me what tell me what it's all about matt it was none of that he just came out and he wrestled and he did very little of his stick in the ring other than that dumbass delete shit and then he got his win he did the slight i'm angry jumping after the bell and he left I'm like okay now, as far as the build up the commentators gave, oh, he damn near killed his brother and his wife is laid out and no life support and all that bull. His response based on the build up was not enough. But if, that, you, that, yeah. it was, if you peel all that away and just look at it for a match, it was a it was a very decent, basic opening match. It, he did what he needed to do and he left. As a as just a basic match, it was it was really good. But going on the stipulation, the things all behind it, the story build up, it was very subpar. You know, uh, so now he goes on uh, to the tag team title match. He said it was very good. And see, I can't even agree with that. I can't because I've seen good. You've seen good. We've seen great. This is like 20% of what TNA used to be able to do. And I know he's gonna be mad because he's already mad at me. Okay, but I there's a level of practicality that I go on. All right. Now you said Alicia was annoying, but she is a heel. Yeah, it's she. You can be a heel, but don't stand there like a deer in headlights. Don't just no. Get in and make it look like an accident. It's like you could tell, we have to set this up. Is everyone in place? All right, let us do the spot. Yeah, they have women be heels all in the same way 90% of the time. And it's it's, it's old. They've been doing it, it about 30 it's, years. It's not about that. It's old. It's, it's just the setup for her to get hit. And the setup for her to get it hit is tied into how they have women be heels. Okay. That's how it's tied in. I, now think, I can see it. Think about this. Nick Aldis backed up by Camille. She wouldn't just get up there and be in place. She'd take off her heels, get on the apron, and apply said forearm to said face. See, yeah. that's different. That's a good heel. She would be on the outside. You come running around the corner, and you get speared. You're not just, oh, I got hit. I'm cannon fodder. I'm dead. I'm sick of that. So the setup is part of the 30 years of crap they have made women do. He says Eddie was great in the 2000s in Ring of Honor and his early years in TNA, and he's still solid now. I mean, I don't know what case you're trying to make. Oh, it's, it's, that's aimed at me. Cause that's, I said, that's aimed at you? Yeah, because I said I, I don't see it with Eddie Edwards. Back in the day in Ring of Honor. Oh, it oh, was. It, oh, yeah, that okay. was it. But I don't. I, I haven't seen anything from him to be like, oh, man, okay, this is somebody I'd like to watch. 
Haven't seen it. Back in the day, and it sucked because it's been over 20 damn years or roughly thereof. So both of y'all got great points to make because Eddie Edwards, yeah, he was smaller. He was faster. And I'm sure, just like every other wrestler, he's got his injuries going on. I'm sure he does. And maybe that's all tied into it. It could be. But I haven't, even for me, I haven't seen anything. It's like I haven't seen that in-ring personality. I haven't seen the emotion that used to be on his face. It's like he's coasting. Maybe he is. And I, you know, and I'm like, look, if you get to the point where you're coasting with your career, that's if, I don't know if he is, but that's if, you know, right? Because, you know, just, you might want to think about hanging it up. I know you got to put food on the table, but open up a wrestling school or get a podcast where you talk about your career and stuff and what puts viewers up there, talk about all the dirt that you know that happened backstage. Because that's what people, they care more about that than anything else, all the dirt backstage and stuff. And I'm like, that's that's meaningless. If you're going to talk about the dirt backstage, which I get tired of people talking about, do something constructive with like Stevie Richards. He talked about Shawn Michaels and what that did to him. Mm-hmm. You know, and he heard about it from other people and he saw Shawn do it. So, yeah. People. And then it's like basically telling somebody how not to be. People like drama. They do, yes. Across the board, across the world. That is what gains interest. If they want to see sports, they'll go watch baseball or something. He says, we must have seen a different match because I remember seeing both teams having each other's back a few a few times. Now, in your own words, that's the problem. You've seen each of them have each other's back a few times. Okay, look. Just, I just, when it comes to a tag team match, this is what I'm looking for. I don't want them on the floor kneeling, nope. letting the others have the spotlight for a second. Nope. No, this is a tag team match. Okay? You get beat down, you make the tag, you are laid out in the corner of yours, on your side, in the corner for a little bit. Granted. It takes time for you to recover. It lets everyone in the audience know that you are not ready. Mm -hmm. It lets them know you're not ready. You slowly get up. You're leaning on the ropes. I mean, like, leaning. It lets the crowd know you are not ready. Now, you got all things worked out, the spots or whatnot. And if you can call it in the ring like an actual professional wrestler, then... You don't have to wait for the spot. Your partner can tell, tired, beat down. He's got to show that he's got to recover because these people can wrestle for 45 minutes straight with no problem, but you got to show damage has happened. So it's all work. So look hurt. Let your partner know, I'm not ready. And while you, if you are leaning on that rope and you're looking tired and beat up and your partner tag you in, the crowd can be like, what is wrong with you? Yep. Commentary, what is wrong with them? Yeah, you can still go 30 and 40 minutes, you know, before you get your, your tank run dry. We get that. But it's about the message you send to everybody. And when you are on, when you get on that apron and you see your partner in trouble, you know what you can do? You can come in and stop that for a moment. Go in, kick them, punch them, just lazily fall over and bowl them off your partner or break up the submission or something. Make the ref work. Yes, and slowly get out the ring. You're you trying, but you got to save your partner. you got to be there for your partner. Not, I'm going to sit on the apron and do nothing, or I'm going to stand on the apron and do nothing. I'm going to kneel on the floor and do nothing. Here's the spot. Let me jump into the ring and break it up. No, you have to show that you are a tag team, and tag teams are there for each other. And not like you and your... Your lover come home and you get a shower, but while you're showering, your partner, your lover is going to stay outside the house just waiting for you to stop showering. You'd have to have a tiny house. <laughs> your partner should be in the house with you. You know, be like, well, he ain't done showering. I'm going to stay outside and get bit up by mosquitoes. Tag teams that we like. RVD and Sabu, Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, the the Dudley Boys, um, old school, you know, Hardy Boys, 
FTR before AEW just did what they did. But if you get, this is a title match. They are take trying to take the titles from the system. The system is a thing. They've shown themselves to be a formidable faction. They had all the gold except for what the X division. Yeah, all the yeah they, they had everything. They had it all. They just, the only reason they didn't have it because they didn't have enough members to have, have exactly. It. That's they it. had it all. So this was a tag team match for them to get their titles back. They activated their you know what's it called? We lost and we get another chance. Yeah, the rematch, the rematch, rematch clause. clause. Thank yeah. you, rematch clause. Against the system, it should have been a Gorillas of Destiny Briscoe type match. Yes, that's what it, that's what it should have been. That's what I was expecting. I was expecting knock down, drag out, you know. I but mean, and it don't have to be hyper fast paced. No, no, not not fast no. paced. No, but you wrestle like something is on the line. And I know they have it in them. That little dude Ace, I know he's got it in him because I've seen him put on that kind of match before. It's just this wasn't that match. And yeah, and it's just, and it could have been. I know it could have been, which is why I was down and being hard on this match because I know what they could have done. You know, even Chris Bay, I know what he could have done, but they didn't do it. No one's saying they don't have the ability. It's just they didn't show it. And now see. Then, then, then Mr. Jones, he says, he, now he gets mad at me. Okay, these people are working so hard, and yet it's not good enough for you? I'm like, whoa, bruh, chill. First of all, folks work hard all the time, and it's not good enough for a lot of people. For real. You know, not good enough for me. Man, they ain't trying, I ain't trying to make them good enough for me. I haven't even, I haven't, I don't do that. I don't sit there and say, well, you know what? I wasn't impressed, so it sucks. No. I'm speaking on behalf of what the audience, the people need to see from these people. That's what is missing. They, the people, the audience, the fans, the the wrestling lovers, those that actually love wrestling and not spots, they need to see a higher level match than this. That's what it is. It ain't about good enough for me. It's being good. These people are paying your bills. They putting yo yo yourself to work. They giving your company enough money to function. Give them something in return. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. If I'm a wrestler and I'm getting paid fifty thousand or more an hour a, 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 a year, I mean a year, and all I'm gonna do is go out there and put on a two star match on a pay per view. Something's wrong with me. Here is something else that you are not considering, which you have mentioned before. In other conversations is the wrestlers slash the company educates the people yes. on what should be happening exactly and for a long time the people across many companies have been educated that this is the best That's it. Because anything like Gorillas of Destiny and, and the Briscoes, that's an anomaly. So much of an anomaly, it was in New Japan and Ring of Honor. New Japan is hard to get a hold of. Ring of Honor was small at the time. Probably a lot of folks probably like, man, I ain't even seen it. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a damn shame that you didn't because it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. One of the best tag team matches. Both of them. Didn't they fight Russell twice? Mm -hmm, yep. And even the build up for it was amazing. But the crowd, the Montreal crowd, they were very satisfied with it. Very. They were very satisfied with it. And you know, they are designed to please their crowds. And they did that. But this just proves that we aren't their crowd. We're trying to be. But when this bring this comes to a, it's about standards. If your standard is Briscoes and Gorilla of Destinies, then you're not going to be satisfied with this. And we weren't satisfied. That's it. Hey man, if you're used to getting filet mignon, and somebody take you over to uh, the local elementary school and give you some Salisbury steak, you're not going to be happy. That's not saying the Salisbury steak they ain't putting their heart and soul to it. No. 
It's just that it doesn't compare. TNA, to me, right now, is, is if you go into your favorite restaurant and getting a good meal for a very good, low, reasonable price, so, it, so you always go back. And then, all of a sudden, you notice that over time, your meal is getting smaller, it's not as flavorful, and the price has gone up 70%. Now you're paying more for less and it's rubbish compared to what it used to be. You know, that that's what this is, because I know how these things used to go. I know what TNA used to produce and it dwarfed WWE and tag team easily. It's got nothing easily. to do with what the ability of the wrestlers. We know that they can do far better. They didn't either because they weren't compelled to or this is the, the climate that they're in. So it doesn't have anything to do with them working hard and it not being good enough for us. No, it's got more to do with the environment. It don't matter how hard you work on that building. If you miss a few spots and that foundation crumble, it's all worthless and you done killed people. It's that simple. It don't matter how hard you work. Smart. You got to be smart. You know, you can work hard depending upon what that is, but you also got to work smart. You can be a bodybuilder. You can do all that stuff. You can work hard, but you're not going to get far. But if you work smart and you know exactly what muscles to engage and win, then that hard work will pay off because you'll be working smart with that hard work. Then next he says, and this way I'm like, I don't get this. Ace and Bay have been a tag team since 2021, and I think they know tag team wrestling well enough after their feud with the Motor City Machine Guns and Myers and Eddie have teamed with different partners in the past. So to say they don't know enough about tag team wrestling is ludicrous. First of all, there's a lot wrong with that because I didn't say they don't know enough about tag team wrestling. That never, that never left my real piece. It never it did. Actually, I said the opposite. You know, and just because somebody's been a tag team for three and a half to four years don't make them eligible to know anything about tag team wrestling. As a singles wrestler, there are, in general, you don't really know wrestling until probably your seven and a half to ninth year in wrestling those little things you got to learn and I mean microscopic little things that mean so much timing pacing listening to the audience being able to call an audible when things are going a bit south or when they're going very north and you just say okay we got them let's just we, we can end it right here we ain't got to do the next five and eight minutes we got them in our hands right now let's do this being able to do those things and call it at the right moment little things like that working the crowd during the match making them feel for what is going on every step of the way these are the things that don't happen so much anymore and being a tag team for these years don't mean they know anything at all other than make the tag do a bunch of double team moves, get all your spots in, and that's about it. Because that is predominantly, not all, but predominantly what they showed me. And I'm new to this team. So I'm watching this team, and I've seen them a couple of times. I've not been impressed. Ace Austin, I'm impressed with. I'm impressed with them. Chris Bay, I was like, well, you standard. You run of the mill, little dude flipping around. And the fact you, you, and Chris Bay use a lot of heavy hitting moves that don't hit heavy. It's not impressive. They don't have each other's back like they should. And keep in mind what I said during the uh, review, I literally mentioned that they could have done better because I know all four of them could have easily done better than this and shown those tag team expertise uh, uh, situations and techniques the fact that I have seen them in the past what little I have 
but still ABC they all right for a little bit I've seen currently but Edwards Myers I know how they can get down and they didn't get down that way so that's why I said it. there was more intermediate style match it wasn't a tag team it was an expert tag team match it don't matter how many matches or who you wrestled that doesn't make you knowledgeable it doesn't make you qualified what makes you qualified is what you display to the fans and about what you display. I mean look there's a, there's a bunch of people out there that just say look those are expert tag teams yada 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 and I'm like okay cool I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong because that's what you've been exposed to that's what you that's what you know that's what you like there you go you like what you like and that's just it it ain't bad it ain't evil it ain't wrong it's you like what you like and if they do what you like then they did right for you plain and simple I, I, I mean there's no argument in that but when it comes to what I know what I've experienced from this company and other companies and other tag teams, this was extremely subpar. If we're supposed to get better over time, this ain't it. This won't get any better. This... So yeah, I never said they didn't know enough about tag team. I'm telling you what they showed me and what they could have done, which was a lot better, but they didn't do it. So I'm just saying, don't put words in my mouth. Don't do that. That ain't fair to me, and it ain't fair to yourself. Just just saying. Am I wrong anywhere with this? No. I don't think so. Procedural, let me know when I'm wrong. Yeah, if you were wrong, I would have I interjected, but... And then I I've told already, she's wrong for telling me I'm wrong. I've already given my explanation <laughs> for this prior to this, you know. Mm -hmm. that everyone's been educated that this is supposed to be the it and they delivered the it and Dow Jones was obviously very satisfied and I'm glad he enjoyed it and yeah. the people in the in the crowd they enjoyed the hell out of it too and that's what they're meant to do enjoy it it's just we didn't enjoy it because our we, we like something different we got, we, our standards have been set high due to the greatness we've seen in the past that's what is our that's our bag right there that's our deal that's our situation we know what can be done and we're not trying to tell you what to like yeah we're letting you know what we like you like what you like and we support what you like for you because you like that it's, i mean ain't no argument over it not yeah. really that's it just to, don't put words in my mouth they didn't show that they knew too much about tag team wrestling they did not show. I ain't say they what they know and don't know. I'm saying what they showed. If Matt Hardy went to the ring, slapped dude, and and pinned him with with a finger, you you'd, be, you'd have been like, what was that? And then someone would look at you. That was the best match on the planet. And you probably lose your collective shit over that because you'd be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't it. You know, like the finger poke of doom. You know, Hogan poke Nash, Nash fall. One, two, three. And people would that match was built up too. Just keep in mind that match was really built up. <laughs> mm. And he says Mike and Jake was good. I miss his tag team with Ortiz, but I am looking forward to see him as a solo wrestler. I, I, I'm gonna have to relearn Mike Santana because when I saw him in uh, Jonathan Gresham's. It seems like his Vanity Wrestling Company. I, I thought he was beyond excellent. Did he wrestle? I thought yeah. he just spoke. No, I thought he did something. No, oh, he maybe he did out, He just came out and spoke, but he didn't wrestle. No, that promo, that's what it was. That promo he got me. He was an excellent promo. That promo got me. I remember that. Thank you. And so, I'm not, I'm going to I'm gonna have to watch him a little bit longer because there's a lot of, it's a pay-per-view, so there should be some things to, to just let go. It's just, yeah, pay-per-view is when you need to show up and I'm just not happy with what I saw but you know it was all right <laughs> it was a good three-star match that's how I saw that rascals uh he said rascals have lost too many bouts in TNA so it was nice to see them in a match for once I mean I probably had 
I don't know what he was trying to say. I, th I mean, I probably had something to do with the fact that Wes Lee is a popular NXT wrestler. It probably, okay. I mean, it probably has something to do with the fact that Wes Lee is a popular NXT wrestler, but still, regardless, they needed a win. I'm uh, guessing Wes would be the one that was in the uh, diaper-like shorts. Uh, no, 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 no. Wes Lee is a popular NXT wrestler. Yeah, the third rascal. They, they, oh, that was, that was the NXT guy? I'm that was guessing Wesley? it will only make sense. Otherwise, there'd be no point in him mentioning it. Someone tells me he just like Wesley Snipes, but Wes Lee, okay. W-E-S. Yeah. We didn't watch the match, so there's very little we can say about it. We just tell you who won. That's it. Yep. And he says, and he says the, the, the here's the thing. TNA has a good roster, but half the time they are effed over due to stupid booking. Yep. Yeah. He says AJ and PCO was okay. I mean, if you like that, <laughs> AJ works much better as a heel manager than a wrestler. Thoroughly agree on that. Who is AJ? AJ Francis, the big dude. Oh, the dude talk all the time. Okay. Yeah. I I like him as a manager. I like him as a manager. As a wrestler, he can do a few things, but I. It's I guess it sucks, and I hate I hate that I gotta say this. I really do. Y'all have no idea how much I hate this. But his attire turns me off. It's something not right. And I can't... It's something not right with it. I can tell you what it is. What? He walked out with two belts. Regardless of how he got them, he walked out with them. And you and I have a thing about people looking like champions and his attire does not make him look like a champion he's like a dude holding some belts in his pajamas okay he's yeah. like he was wearing pajamas like he's holding the belts for somebody else yeah in, the, in his jam he's nice and comfortable it was nice to see PCO win some titles and after years of punishing his body with all the spots and then he says you forgot the proposal by Delanda look mm, no we, we Cedra didn't. skipped as soon as that was over we just skipped to get to the next match because we got so much to do and we are so far behind. And we're watching the matches and not really engaging in the storyline. So if they're getting married. They have some weird little babies. Hey, more power to them. Yeah, that's... <laughs> we got so much to do. And we're also, we're writers. So we put, you know, that on the back burner to do the reviews and whatnot. So... Uh, <laughs> there's a lot that we are not doing outside of these this stuff yeah i don't care that they got that she got a ring i, I don't i don't care that they dated it's, it's a work I anyway i don't care <laughs> and if it's that's not why, work mm. that's why i fast forwarded but if they're together and like i said they're gonna have some weird little pco babies more power to them yeah cedra started skipping when she started skipping I'm, I'm i'm not even i used to argue with her i used to argue with her I'd be like what are you doing what what happens next when they leave the ring or they go to the next segment then skip and she she's like okay okay and then she just said, I know what you said. I know what I agree with, but I'm going to just do what I want to do. And I'm like, all right, just do what you want to do. And I'm, I'm not going to argue no more. And that just, that's why that went the way that went. I'm, I'm not going to argue no more. Just you skip, you skip, fine. See, now when we watch something, you can be like, should I skip now? I'm going to be like, no, do what you got to do. I'm going to do what you got to do. And she's going to know what she's going to know what to do. And I'm going to be like, yep, now you're a meerkat. You don't know if you're in danger or not. I just keep skipping. <laughs> you're so looking I'm around. Gonna, I'm going to keep skipping, especially if it's TNA. Be like, yeah, Mufasa, no. Mufasa? Mufasa? Nope. Mufasa? Nope. The hyenas? The hyenas? Wait, I mean, what if, we, if we watched it every <laughs> week, okay, we might be invested in that bull. But we don't watch it every week. We just watch the pay-per-views. So the built-up bull means zilch. It means nada to us. We are not invested. The reason we don't watch it every week is because when we tried, it was very rubbish. It was really bad. For example, and I like didn't want to, and I didn't want to dislike TNA, so I was like, we'll just watch the pay per views only. And I was fine with that because you know that whole, do you like me? Yes or no? Shh, not, I ain't got time. There is too much going on in life. I do not have time for this made up crap. I know it's made up, but that's just. So so made up yeah it's they pulled her out of us out of going for a title from actually wrestling they pulled her from that to do this bs with pco yep nope don't have time 
He says, I thought Grace versus Ash, the girl, I got to put that, the girl, uh, was going to set. But it was surprisingly good. Ash actually looked decent against Grace. Really, CR? Judging someone, someone's butt like Cedra? It's, it's Cedra. It's not an E, it's an I. Really? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give up the game. I'm going to give up the game right now. I'm a, I'm I'm human. I'm a I'm a dude. I'm automatically judging everything on a female. That don't mean I'm judging her mind or whatever her life experiences are. I'm the first thing you I see just like any other dude, you see a female, you start scoping. You can't help it. You try not to. You be like, "Oh, there she is. Look at her eyes. Let's see what she do in the ring." You can't help it. Huh? Does she have a booty or not? Does she got legs? Is one missing? <laughs> Does she got legs? Yeah. Do she got both her arms on her? Oh, she got some nice arms. Oh, look at the guns on her. Does she have both her arms on her? Is her eye drooping or is it hanging out? Did somebody have to put it, pop it back in? Oh, she got nice eyes. They're both in her, in her head now. You know? You now? Know? Well, yeah. Sometimes they fall out. It just happens. Just walking down the aisle and the eye fall out. You talk about being best up for life. <laughs> I don't know if I can rebound from that. <laughs> <laughs> so look, my whole point on saying that she don't have enough ass to kick out of that move was to get a reaction out of it, somebody. Okay, <laughs> it was to get a reaction, and uh, it's true. She does have a flat ass. She's flat. Oh yeah. I mean, it's not literally. If you saw how I look, I I know what body shaming is. I know what that is. And I don't do comparative woes. What I am doing is not saying she has a flat ass, so she's meaningless. Or why would you want to be with her? Her booty is not as big as others. Nope. It was just I was mentioning it. Just that was that was me half trolling and being half with. That was my thought. She's got a flat ass, and then hey move, and I moved on. I don't you, even care. You can't you got what you got. You can't help what you got. You can't and that, help what and you that's got. what she got. And she she anatomically has a butt like we all do. It just don't go beyond that. Yeah. And in truth, uh, for me, most dudes don't have butts. But then there's a such thing as like really no butt, and usually I point those out. Dudes don't need butts. All right, but guys don't. But see, that's that's me being personal because I don't I don't like guys, so I'm like they don't need them because they don't matter. <laughs> it's like saying guys don't need nipples because they don't matter. They don't. And and look to me. All girls got a booty. It's just how much of one they got. Or Every got. person has a booty. Anatomically, I haven't heard of anyone born without a butt. I've, I've seen the cone heads. They were not humans. We're talking about people. They were on Earth. They landed. We're talking about people. If I threw someone off a building, they'd be landing on Earth too. And, but yeah, but they were originally from here, landing or not. <laughs> 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 I was like, I'm going to lose this one real quick, but I got to try. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, the fact of how much butt she has has no bearing on if she should be able to win or not, no, or survive a move or not. <laughs> You know, we don't we don't really give a damn. She probably, <laughs> really have, don't. She probably have less back injuries from taking them flat back bumps because it's flat all the way down. Yeah. See? So it's a benefit. She, she can take a flat ass back bump. You don't hurt your top ass that way. For real. And I was, you, you watch women take flat back bumps. They grab the top of that butt, lower back like, oh my. And that's a legit. That's a legit. That's not a sale. That's legit. That's a giveaway. <laughs> that was free. <laughs> and so, yeah, the, the, the women way more than dudes, they have to lift their legs higher to reduce that impact. Because that can lead to a lot of... what? What's it? Sciatica. Sciatica. Sciatica is no joke. Just like knee problems. Sciatica will put you on your back and you be there. Yeah. Needing help to get to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, it, it is not cool by a damn sight. So, if you're a female wrestler and you've got some, some booty back there, the top, the top part sticks out, you know... Instead of looking like an, uh, uh, a deflated onion, 
but you you look like it's kind of an orange or something you need to lift your legs a little bit higher when you're falling because you want to avoid that and keep your core strong that helps sciatica yes keep your core strong so he says uh mike bailey and ali and ali was very good but the ending hurt it and uh anthem which uh, owns tna uh, or whoever the F is running TNA just could not help themselves. They just wanted to reference the screw job from Montreal in 1997 so much they even bought him, they bought out Earl Hebner. The commentary team hyped it up that Earl redeemed himself, which made me roll my eyes. If Scott was still in charge, we would not have seen this sports entertainment BS. Why can't wrestling companies just be themselves and stop ripping off WWE? WWE sucks. And then he put at. <laughs> so he's probably trying to put the fourth exclamation point. And then, yeah. It, and uh, yeah, it was bad. WWE. I, I'm, I don't know anymore. It's bland-ish, but there are. Bright spots. Yeah. And I'm loving the bloodline. I'm loving that. And they got they got all my boys there. So I, I, I'm, I'm watching every Friday. Yeah, they got Tama Tonga. Yep, Gorillas of Destiny, Jacob Fatu. Tamatanga's all you need. Tamatanga does no wrong. <laughs> yeah, he graduated that ages ago. He's he can do no wrong. Merit. And I first saw his creepy ass in the ring. Like, what the hell is that? We've been hooked ever since. Got me feeling oogie. You yep. done your job. And then he says, the main event was fun. Just six good wrestlers going at it and save the show. I can't disagree with that. Mm -mm. And like I said, it was elimination, which is like rare. rare. It's, it's rare like unicorns, man. It was great. After all the years of WWE screwing him, it was nice to see Nick Nimitz win the TNA title. Jawbone. <laughs> with his little legs. <laughs> Hopefully, he gets a decent reign. Frankly, I would have been okay if either Nick, Josh, Joe, or Kaz won. Honestly, yeah. Joe Hendry, nah. He's comedy relief. You know, he's. I think he's going to get into that. But that's I just. Hoping, I was hoping Kazarian would win it. You was? Yeah. Hmm. He says, we need more elimination matches in wrestling. Mm -hmm. They are more fun and unpredictable, unlike four way bouts. You, you picking on me, man? You, you picking on me? You picking on me? My. If you pick it on me, see our fire pro in a match of four, hey, look, it's elimination and it's four way. It's a carryover from WWF, no mercy. <laughs> and so, and I've been thinking about kind of getting rid of it, to be honest with you. Why? Um, I'll be honest with you, doing that match tends to be a lot of work. Mm. Trying to, you know, because, you know, I got to do the intro, I got to get all the, all the intro done, and then. I got to reload everything and then run the match. I can do the intro without, you know, putting it at, uh, for a title match. Mm -hmm. So the champion comes out, do all the thing, yada, yada. And then not to waste that quote unquote title chance, then run it in a different section to, from normal to battle Royal, just so they can have the match. Then I got to clip all that together and make sure it looks decent without the loading screen and all that best that I can. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's a lot of work, and it seems like people aren't so interested in that anyway, um, even though that has some of the better storylines with it. But anyway, what, what were you going to say? Don't get retired. Yeah. But it's just a thought right now. We just have to see. Um, let's see. Joe is more a comedy act. So he's mad. Joe is more a comedy act. If you followed his work pre TNA, you was you would see his potential. Yeah, we did. We, we, we saw did. His work. That's yeah, why we were pissed off about see, it. That, that that's the thing. See, he was you you, awesome. you you don't know what we know. You don't know what we have and have not seen. Have we seen a lot of wrestling? No, we have not. But you can if you followed his work. Hey, you don't know, and we have, we, and we know what he can do. Which is why when we got back into this and we saw that Joe Hendry was there. I was all about some Joe Hendry. Problem is, he ain't doing anything worth a damn other than comedy that's not needed. Comedy that the crowd kind of cares for slightly. 
And it's like, he could be fighting someone that's known to be a mass murderer and he'll make a joke out of it. And the stuff is funny half the time. It's hilarious. But I'm like, that's a lot of production we for dis- barely little. We discovered Joe Hendry and Ring of Honor before he went blonde when he still had dark brown hair. Mm-hmm. And then he went away and he came back and he toned up and he got some tips and he went blind and he was incredible. Yep. He was doing damage. He was a powerhouse. And then COVID hit and the rest is history. Yep. He got stuck uh, wherever he lives um, in Great Britain. One of the islands. I don't know. I know. It's, I don't think it's London. Is it one of the other islands? I don't know all of them. Please forgive me. But he got stuck there, and after that, well, we didn't know where it was. And then we started watching TNA, and we were like, it's Joe Hendry, and we liked the song. We were all about it, and then we watched his matches, and like, oh, dude, like, what happened? So, so yeah. yeah, that's that's what happened. That's, what it, that's what's up. For the last few weeks, TNA have been building him up strong. He got charisma, great move set, and has a good physique. Okay. It takes more than charisma and a move set and physique to be a great pro wrestler. It takes more than that, way more. Having charisma that that put the the crowd right with you, good. Great moves, go well, great move set. I mean, truthfully, that's for the indie people. They care about the moves, and I was there. Man, so I was in the 90s. I was like, what moves did this person got? I didn't know. I did not know. I did not understand. I just did not understand. Okay, to a certain degree. Move set matters, but it's not. It's not every. Like Kevin Nash barely had a move set. Yeah, that's true. Ric Flair barely had a move set. Sting had less than Flair. But it's it's how they deliver it and then how the story of the match is told. That's your personality, your entering personality, and all for, those uh, little things. For example, Nimith, you know, he's got the crowd. He looks like a throwback to an 80s hairband. I want to give a microphone to him screaming to the mic. But then he gets in the ring. He's got a great physique. He's yeah. got a decent look. The crowd's with him. But he's super kicking all over the place. And I just want to rich. You see, it's things like that. Well, you don't have super kicks. You got foot jabs. It's it's not important. I'm tired of how any- you hold on. How you gonna pop over a super kick now? How you gonna? What does it mean? It what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. And I that's mean, his finisher. Yes. I'm like, it doesn't mean anything. It's like it as a if finisher. Kevin Nash power bombs somebody and the crowd pop, then you pick them up and do it again, and they 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 pop, and then you do it again, and they pop, and then again, and they pop, and then he pin them. And then they do that, and it's eventually the crowd will be like, "Well, he power bombed him." Mm-hmm. Like Wardlow, you saw how the crowd died on that. Yep. You know, I. I and Wardlow and damn near basically. And, oh yeah, not like Nick Nimmin. He didn't kill the power bomb. Yep. It's it's if it doesn't mean anything, eventually the fans are going to be like, "Well, I mean, he's just doing this," and that's what you don't want. When Ric Flair put on the figure four, when Steen put on the Scorpion Deathlock, it, it was a meant thing. something. When Scott Steiner hit the Frankensteiner, when Rick Steiner hit the the what they would call the Steiner line, that lunging stiff arm lariat, it meant something. Remember when the DDT meant something? Yes, the Jake Roberts hit fl- that DDT. The crowd popped like crazy, the even on the even job guy. Flow DDT, Ravens DD, no DDT, no grungy looking Raven. Oh man. And that was your favorite. That was a thing of beauty. It was so smooth. Mm. <laughs> Stuff like that. Moves that you remember. You, how are you going to remember a super kick? What, what importance does it have? None anymore. Man, watch Arn, An- Arn Anderson punch somebody. Matter of fact, no. I'm going to tell you who punches like Arn Anderson. Back how Arn Anderson used to punch. Trevor Murdoch. Mm-hmm. He punches the way Arn Anderson used to punch. Trevor Murdoch, like he'll lay somebody out. When he throws a punch, 
I ain't gonna lie, I pop every time. Well, I don't watch them because I don't watch NWA. But when we did, yeah, it was like, oh, every every time, it's like, oh my it goodness, look like it yeah, hurt, <laughs> like you shouldn't get up. So you know, I see what you're getting at, Jones. I see what you're getting at. Yeah, charisma, great move set, and a good physique. I get what you're getting at, but he is not presenting himself like a champion. You can be a champion and do the comedy. But when you are predominantly comedy, you kill your potential to be a champion. Now, if he's making a shift, okay, that's something different because you can shift. You can change up what you're doing. So if he's making a shift, then we're going to have to let him progress through his shift. Yeah. And see and what happens. Yeah, see where it go. But just, just saying for me, the comedy ain't working. And I can tell from... When Joe lost, the crowd was upset, but not because he lost. It's how he lost. And that's good for him. That's good for business. Because you want the crowd to be upset with a loss. And especially how. So we just have to see how that go. Nick, he says, Nick Nimitz is the most underappreciated wrestler in the world. So it's nice to see him get the recognition he rightfully deserved. Everything's good, but them damn super kicks, those yeah. foot jabs. A foot jab. If it ain't gonna put a person down, it's a foot jab. It might as well be. A, it might as well be a punch, a light punch. He said, "I would not say TNA is going the way of NWA unless they upload Joe Hendry shooting coke up his nose." I was like, "Now nah, that was a sick burn," because that's exactly what. We didn't watch Sam Hain. We didn't watch that event. We quit watching right before that. Yeah, because it was like, things just didn't feel right. I can't really put my finger on it. But it felt I felt the magic die. Camille, they took the belt from Camille and it was just like, huh. Yeah, but that won't. That, I, but that was when it, that's when it started. I wanted to sour on that. But who, who, who got it? Kenzie? Yeah. Look. She, she was doing good. She was. So I want to. I was like, okay. This might be all right. But yeah, her losing it. It started it. But then there was other stuff, other matches that they started having that that they were shying away from for many months. Mm-hmm. They started bringing those back, and I was like, I don't, I don't know about this. I don't know. And then, uh, and then, uh, what's what's dude's name? Dude with the uh, the obscenely ripped body. Obscenely ripped? Yeah. Oh, EC3? Yeah, he won the belt. And he won it on a night where he looked like he was wrestling injured. It and was he, weird. And, but, it, and, and, th- and things got weird, weirder after that, too. And I, I, won't, I won't upset with him winning. I thought he should have been champion a while ago. Just things got weird after that. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, you could feel the magic go away. And I didn't want to be a part of that. That, so we just stopped watching, and then we hear what happened at Sam Hain, and it's like, which is what you just said, you know. So you know, Jones, you you know, which which shot them in the foot. They was gonna get a good TV they deal. They could have got. Deal. They could have actually been the National Wrestling Alliance. I'm like, why would you be so stupid? We want to be edgy. We gotta get something to make people watch. All right then. Living on the edge. It's like every every wrestling company, every business out there has a no drug policy. So you're going to show somebody doing drugs? I mean, right now, that would be like if, if, if AEW released the Young Bucks and any company hired them. <laughs> no one that loves professional wrestling gives a damn about the young bucks spot lovers do they love the young bucks if that and i'm not down in that there's just two types of crowd you've got your traditionals and you've got your spots and the spots they love the young bucks but they're getting tired of them at the same time so wwe would they hire them literally the, can you guys listen to our instructions and do what we tell you to do uh, we got our own ways and, you know, and be like, oh, well, then 
go and do it your way because <laughs> you, you know WWE don't suck too much Paul Levesque is doing something is just also falling into the trap which is also killing it's going to kill the future but it's going to build the present that's where WWE is they're going to build the present but it's going to kill the future so that's that's how it's going to be because you only cater to certain people to be in the main event so that oh you know well, who's this RFH Extra Ray Fubo Hoob Extra <laughs> and he's talking about my road show and he says it was so amazing so thanks dude we appreciate it <laughs> Oh my goodness. So look, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of anger coming at us probably lose some people like last time. But I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to most likely because these are wrestling lovers. There's stuff I'm going to agree with, stuff I'm going to disagree with. But I'm going to come at you. I'm not going to come at you saying you don't know anything. You know, uh, I'm not going to say like you suck because you like what I don't like. <laughs> That ain't happening. <laughs> That's no, 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 no. But if you're gonna put words in my mouth, I'm gonna call you out on that. If you're gonna miss speak on something because it sounded like I said something else, I'm gonna have to call that out too. And I want to have a running thing about girl having no ass, but I like, okay, I can't do that. <laughs> no, I gotta let that I, one go. Yeah, I was I was hoping I could make a running thing with that, but I, my bad. <laughs> no, so I'm serious. She she has no ass. She knows it, but that's it doesn't change anything, you know. It don't she, help her wrestle. It don't help her wrestle any less. It just she got what she got. Yeah, that's really it. <laughs> and so I did. I, hey, look, look, look. I did get the response. You know, so it shows I can be a damn good heel if I want to be. It don't take much. Mm -hmm. You know, it don't take much to be a heel, but it takes a lot to be a sustained heel. MJF, that's a sustained heel. So much so that the crowd loves him. As much as they want to boo him, they can't help it. Because a heel done well is attractive. And it's not just in wrestling. That's across any kind of entertainment you appreciate well done heels and when you have an industry with suck tacular wrestlers in terms of promos and disposition and then you get that one that come and does it right they stand out mm -hmm. MJF would not stand out in the days of Flair Piper Sergeant Slaughter, Iron Sheik, and, and, and all of them, you know, the Andersons, he wouldn't have stood out. He would have been part of the greats, but he would have been standard back then. He would have been standard, and he could have been used as a super heel enhancement guy because he's got the body, but he ain't got the height, and they would have been working on the height. Yeah, they would have. But yeah, he does a heel very well. So, yeah, it's 1051. I got other stuff to do. So, look, this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, answering viewers on Slammiversary. And with that, I want y'all to be good, be chill, be safe. And hopefully, <laughs> we'll see you next time.